It was just a one night thing, but my husband found out and made sure I regretted it every day. Promised myself never to attend a bachelor's party again. And trust me, guys, I have my valid reasons. The last bachelor's party I attended ended up in me sleeping with an athlete and cheating on my husband. I messed up big time, and I can only hope that things don't end up getting worse than it already is. I've always been told that bachelor parties are wild and unpredictable, but I never imagined being at the receiving end of the wild activities. I never even imagined participating in any of the wild activities at all. That's why it breaks my heart to realize that I let my guard down, and now I've done something despicable. I'm very scared, guys. I'm so scared that I do not know what to do. I'm scared that my husband would find out, and then I'll be done for. I just know that he will never let this go or forgive me. There's no chance that the man I married will just overlook everything that happened that night. I'm scared, and I have many reasons to be scared. My name is Elena, and I'm a 31-year-old dancer and choreographer. I've been a choreographer for almost 10 years of my life. It's something that I fell in love with at a very young age. I'm married to a journalist, and I'll not be revealing his real name because I want to keep his identity private. I will just refer to my husband as Dane. He's 32 years old and he has an obsession for journalism. A dancer and a journalist? I know some of you might wonder how such an odd match ever came to be. To be honest, sometimes I also wonder how we managed to get married despite our weird professional comparisons. Dane and I have been married for three years now. We do not have children yet because we're always traveling for one thing or another. We decided not to have kids until we're perfectly sure that we would have enough time to raise them properly. I travel a lot because of my job as a dancer and choreographer and that's how I ended up traveling to Chicago for a wedding. It's a client's wedding and I literally didn't know anyone there except the client who had been an old friend of mine. It's that particular wedding that led me to be in this narrow-minded state I'm currently in. Now I wish I rejected the job and never truly went to that wedding, but I guess that wish could only come true if wishes were horses and unfortunately they are not. When I first got the gig, I spoke to my husband about it because I always took his permission before traveling for my job. He also takes permission from me before traveling for work-related activities. Forgive me for using the term gig. I think I'm old school and have the tendency to call things in a weird manner. Don't judge me, lol. When I spoke to Dane about it, he didn't have a problem. It was normal for me to travel for work and he never complained. I think the reason he's always chilled about it is because he also travels for work on several occasions. Maybe he feels guilty and just decides that it's best if we have a mutual understanding. To be honest, neither Dane or I are home regularly, guys. Our schedules collide a lot and that makes it hard for us to stay home together. You see the reason we decided to pause on having kids, right? If we had kids now, we'd be the world's worst parents ever. Except we hire a nanny, of course. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Dane gave me permission to go to Chicago for my work. He also told me that he'd be traveling for work, too. So, we both left the house yet again. When I landed in Chicago, it was a lot of work that awaited me. As a choreographer, I think one of my hardest challenges is managing choreography for weddings. It's the worst type of workload to ever have, but I have no choice but to indulge in it because I need to earn that money. My job was to teach the couple and their bridesmaids, groomsmen, some extra choreography that they could use for a perfect wedding entrance. They wanted something like those trendy couple entrances online. It's very hard to teach dance to couples who know nothing about dance or rhythm. It was very difficult for me, and by the time I flew there, I had just two weeks to make sure everyone was good in their respective distinctions. I almost gave up at the end of the day because none of them were cooperating as much as I wanted them to. I'm not joking when I say that I almost had a mental breakdown. Yeah, Things like that are not foreign to my job and anytime it happens, I like to call my husband and have a long talk with him. I did that almost throughout that particular trip, but I had to stop the moment Dane told me he had been occupied and had to work. I don't know what suddenly came into me or why I agreed to attend that particular bachelor's party. I'd never attended most of the bachelor's parties I'd been invited to while at work. The rare cases where I attended those parties were either because the couples were relatives or close friends of mine. That particular couple were just friends of mine that I met in college. When they invited me to their bachelor's party, I said no instantly. 
I didn't even ask for room to think about it. I just knew immediately that it was not something I wanted to do. One of my reasons for initially declining my request is because I had been exhausted from all the dancing and teaching I did. But the couple didn't take my no for an answer at all. They kept pestering me and asking me to come. Now I wish that I had held my ground and stuck to the no I said to them when they first asked. I'm sure that if I had just held on a little bit, things would have turned out differently. When I went to the bachelor's party, I realized that it was not the normal kind of bachelor's. The couple did not have their bachelor's party separately. Instead, they did it together. It was really wild and easily I stepped into the club. I knew that I should have really stayed home and not honored the invitation. There were drinks all over the place and people dancing like there was no tomorrow. I think any of you reading this, who has been to a bachelor's party before, would understand what I am talking about. It's crazy how couples just decide to celebrate in such a wild manner. This particular couple left no stone unturned, and they made sure that they went as wild as they possibly could. I felt so out of place that I did not think twice before asking to leave. The only problem was that I had arrived in the couple's car, and they were the ones who brought me to the club. I was not really familiar with Chicago that much, because I had not been there many times before. I wanted to go and ask the couples if they could call a taxi for me, and tell the taxi exactly where to drop me off. But after thinking about it, I refused to do that because I thought it would be inconsiderate for me to go to stop the couple when they were having fun. I also didn't want to be a burden because I did not want to find myself in an uncomfortable situation. It did not help that I was really scared of the taxi driver taking me to an unknown location, and I would not even realize because I was not that familiar with Chicago. I'm one of those women that are big overthinkers and read into every single detail. I can become paranoid over the most trivial things, and I would give you the same reasons why I am right. I decided to just stay at the party and try my best to hold on till the couple were ready to be. I knew that it was not going to be early because the couple did not look like they planned on leaving the party that early. I just walked around and tasted the food that they had on display. I never want to miss a chance to eat good food. While I was walking around and eating anything in sight, a guy waved at me and gestured for me to come sit with him. I know that many of you will just call that the most cheesy thing you've ever heard, and to be honest, I was quite surprised that any guy had the courage to wave at me. I was so stupid that I thought I had a cardboard on my head that said married, and so I never really expected any guy to call out to me. But I was wrong, and the fact that I was married was not visible to everyone. I don't have a wedding ring if that's what you're thinking. It didn't even last six months before I lost it somewhere. My husband also misplaced his too, and I'm sure we are not the only couple who could not keep their wedding rings. Our job is very demanding and rough, and we understood that there was no way we could keep something as small as a ring. The first few weeks after my wedding, I had to struggle to keep it on while dancing. Sometimes it would slip off my fingers, and other times it would get stuck on my fingers. When I used to misplace it, I will try my best and look for it. But as time went on, I stopped trying, and I finally lost it because I knew that I would still be placed at the end of the day. My husband lost it while he was waiting in line with some of his colleagues to get an important interview. The struggle journalists go through just to be the one to take the interview and shove their mic into the face of the person they want to interview is wild. My husband always tells me about it, and it's a thing I'm always fascinated about. I'm sorry to deviate. I just wanted to make you guys understand that I did not intentionally lose my wedding ring and I did not drop it off at the hotel intentionally. When the guy called me and gestured for me to come sit with him, I tried to pretend like I did not see him calling out to me. I just assumed that he was drunk and he would eventually go away when he was tired. But at the end of the day, I was actually wrong and he did not go away. He walked up to me and was smiling from ear to ear. I'm not even joking, guys. I'm telling the truth. I honestly believed that he was drunk, but I later discovered that he was not drunk at all. Instead of leaving like I thought he would, he introduced himself. I'm not going to say his real name because I don't want to reveal his identity too. I'll just refer to him as Brandon. He asked me for my name and I told him my name. I'm not gonna lie. I actually found Brandon attractive when he walked up to me. I could obviously see back then that he had extremely white teeth that looked like those ones they bought with a lot of money. 
He had a diamond earring on one of his ears. It looked like a diamond earring. I'm not sure if it's fake or not. I think he's like one of those guys that look like they put a lot of money into their outfit and all. I did not understand why he was suddenly interested in talking to me, but I did not push him away. Before Brandon came to talk to me, I already had one or two drinks, so I was quite tipsy and jovial. I don't even know what the bartender mixed for me, and I drank. It looked good, and I just had a taste of it, but I could tell immediately after taking it that it was something strong. Brandon just started off by talking to me, and we spoke about random things. He asked me if I was related to the couple, and I said I was their choreographer. I also asked him what relationship he had with the couple, and he told me that he was a distant cousin of the groom. We went from having conversation to casually laughing, and I honestly don't even remember what we were laughing about. The party had gotten wilder, and people were dancing and puking and drinking and doing several things in the club. I'd never imagined that a bachelor party could go so crazy, and I even saw the couple doing several crazy things with other people. I was caught off guard when Brandon pulled me onto the dance floor. I'm not trying to play the victim card by saying that he just pulled me onto the dance floor. I was very aware of it, but I did not try to fight him. I let him drag me to the dance floor, and I felt really lightheaded. I know that I was not drunk and that I was somewhere between being conscious and being tipsy. The music and environment played a role, and I just went with the flow. And I don't know if it was Brandon's expensive look and confidence, but I just know that I had been drawn to him at that moment. We danced, and we even had drinks together. And that was it, before things got wild. It first started from a kiss, and I don't know how it got crazy. I'm being honest when I say that I did not plan for it to get that far. But I would also be lying if I say that I did not indulge him in any way. For everything he did, I know that I gave him the courage to continue doing it. I felt, and I still feel like I am a very loose woman, because I encouraged Brandon in so many ways. I woke up the next morning in an unknown location, and Brandon was right next to me. That's when it all made sense to me. I spent the night with Brandon, a total stranger that I didn't even know from anywhere. I practically ran out of the hotel room because I was very ashamed of myself. I could not believe that I had cheated on my husband with a total stranger. The fact that I did not know Brandon before made it more disrespectful and crazy. Before leaving the hotel, Brandon gave me his business card, which contained all his information. He told me that he liked the night we spent together and would like to see me again. I only agreed to take the business card after he showed me the protection he had used because I was very scared that he did not use protection. It was on that business card that I discovered that Brandon was an athlete, and I even had to look him up online. He was a young athlete in his mid-twenties, and I could not believe that I had slept with somebody that was six years younger than me. It felt surreal, and I honestly believed that something had gotten into me. But I knew that wasn't the truth. Prior to the bachelor's party, I'd been counting down the days till I left Chicago. But immediately after that party, I've been praying that time would stop till I was able to gather enough courage to see my husband. Well, time stops for no one and I did not suddenly become an exception. I don't know how to say this, but I met with the consequences of my actions. I've started feeling the weight of what I did even without revealing the truth to my husband. The guilt slaps harder than anything I've ever experienced, and it's honestly crazy. I thought it was the couples who usually ended bachelor parties in crazy decisions, but I ended up being the one with the crazy decision. An athlete? Seriously? I cheated on my husband with a young athlete? I'm honestly very disgusted in myself. I wasn't even present on the wedding day, and I didn't take much videos like I usually did. I just hid into my shell and tried my best to pretend like everything was okay, when though I was firmly sure that nothing was okay. The wedding ended one week ago, but I'm still in Chicago. I don't have the courage to leave Chicago right now. My husband has been blowing up my phone consistently for the past few days, but I have intentionally ignored all his calls. I can't do it. How will I tell him? I have no choice than to go back tomorrow. Please help me, guys. I don't know what to do. I will be very honest. The truth is that I don't want him to find out. I still love him and I regret my decision, but I can't imagine losing him for anything in this world. I messed up big time, but I'm not ready to give up on him. I feel like a selfish fool and I know I am, but help me here. Update. 
I got caught, guys. Dane found out the truth on his own. I thought time would take my troubles away, but I guess that time only made it worse. They say time heals wounds, but it just made my own wound bigger. The funny thing is that the wound is not even mine in the first place. I'm the one who went ahead and ruined my marriage with my act of irresponsibility and stupidity. I had to finally leave Chicago because I could not stay there forever, at the end of the day even though I wanted to. It took a lot of personal affirmation for me to finally go back to my house. I spent a lot of money renting a hotel in Chicago, and I think it was one of the things that gave me a reality check and said, I needed to go back. When I got back, I was very happy that my husband was not at home. I checked the many messages he sent me, but I did not reply. I couldn't even bring myself to open the messages for days, but I was finally able to check the messages when I got back to the house. He said in one of his messages that he was going on another work trip. He already left for the work trip a day before I got back. I felt relieved to know that I would not have to face him immediately and that I would have some time to gather my thoughts and think of what to do. I was practically left in a state of denial because I didn't want to come into the present and accept what I have done. I kept trying to draw it out and pretend it was all a dream, but I realized that I was not helping myself and that I was only making matters worse. I read most of the comments you all dropped, but I think I stopped halfway when I realized that the comments were doing me more good and bad. A lot of people said a lot of hurtful things to me, and I can swear that it got to me. What is worse is the fact that I know that I deserved all of the insults and judgment I got. This is the first time I have ever shared my story on Reddit and made myself vulnerable to public scrutiny and judgment. And I do honestly hope that this will be the last time I will share a story on Reddit too. You guys remember that I told you my husband kept calling me continuously, but I ignored him. He left a lot of voice notes, and I was finally able to listen to them when I gathered my thoughts. In most of the voice notes, he sounded very angry and he kept on saying that I was being very mysterious for not answering his calls and ignoring his text. The last voice note sent was the one that showed me just how angry he was. He sounded very furious and he even told me that he would travel to Chicago if I did not call him back. I just assumed that it was a threat and that he would not follow through with it. By the time I even listened to that voice note, I was already out of Chicago. Thankfully, he also said he went for work, so he was not able to follow through with his threat. I finally decided to tell my husband the truth after most of the comments I read on Reddit. The comments made me understand that keeping the truth from my husband would only make me more of a selfish, lying woman, and that I made the decision and I should be ready to dance to the tunes of the music I played. I'm not going to come here and lie like I decided to tell the truth, just because many people said that I should tell the truth. It took a lot of convincing myself and seeing the truth from other people's perspective for me to actually decide to tell him the truth. I finally realized that I had been selfish to think that it was okay to cheat on my husband and then decide to keep the truth from him. Just like most people called me in the comments, I think I am actually an entitled woman and it is very wrong. It's one thing to cheat and it's another thing to try to keep the truth. When all this is over and the truth is finally revealed, I don't want him to finally end up hating me. One of the reasons I also finally decided to tell him the truth is because the athlete kept on messaging me. Apparently he had gotten my phone number from the groom who was his distant cousin. When I asked him how he was able to get the phone number, he said he lied to the groom and said he wanted to hire me for an event. I blocked him immediately after I found out how he got my number, but he kept messaging me with different numbers. I had to switch off my phone completely and start using another phone with a separate SIM because I was tired of receiving his calls. Every moment he tested me or tried to reach out to me just made me relieve the horrible thing I had done. He was like a bad glue that was stuck to me. At some point after I switched my phone back on, I noticed that he stopped texting and calling me. After I noticed that I finally deleted all the call logs and text messages he sent to me, that was how I was finally able to start using my SIM again. My husband only spent one week on his work trip before he finally got back. When he came back immediately, he asked me to sit down and have an important conversation with him. I'd been very shocked and scared, and I honestly believed that he had found out the truth. But ultimately I discovered I was wrong because the conversation did not go the way I expected it to go. He was very angry, 
and he kept asking me why I suddenly decided to act the way I acted in Chicago. It was the perfect opportunity for me to tell him the truth and what happened, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it at that moment. I apologized to him and said that I was sick in Chicago. He didn't believe me at all and suggested that I had been up to something, and that was why I intentionally ignored him. He was so angry that he did not speak to me for the whole day since he got back. That day, I ran to the toilet and cried my eyes out. I kept asking myself that if he was angry at me for just ghosting him for a week, then how would he feel when he found out what I had done? It made me realize that I might have underestimated the gravity of what I had done. I got to understand that there was no way he was going to forgive me, and I slowly began to accept that. Even though I had been preparing to tell him the truth, I was still not fully prepared for when he found out. I never even expected him to find out on his own, and I can tell you all that I was not prepared at all. The level of shock and anxiety that hit me the moment he confronted me was nerve, actually. I have not been prepared, and it was that scenario that made me regret not telling him sooner. It was a Saturday morning, and both of us were at home for the first time in a very long time. My husband had still been very angry with me, and we were not in talking terms for a very long time. I made lunch for us, and I served him in the living room because he was watching TV. I did not expect him to suddenly push the food down till the plate shattered on the floor. The hot food almost burnt my skin, and I almost stepped on the shattered plate because of how shocked I had been. I got upset with him and asked him why he was acting like a child. Imagine me foolishly trying to think that I could scold him not knowing that I was about to receive the shock of my life. To my surprise, he brought out his phone, increased his brightness, and then shoved the phone into my hands. When I squinted my eyes to see what he was trying to show me, my breath almost left me instantly. There were snaps of the text messages Brandon had sent to me. From the date, I could see that there were recent messages. I could not even believe that Dane was able to snap the texts that I didn't even know existed when I didn't even see them myself. I didn't even realize that I had underestimated just how smart my husband was. He was a journalist, and I had forgotten about that while I was caught up in my own personal problems. The messages were so recent that I was very sure that there were not the same messages I had deleted. I realized that he had searched my phone without me even knowing it, and that was where he took the pictures the text from. One of the messages consisted of these words. I can't forget that night even though I've tried. Please stop ignoring me so I can see you again. Those were the disgusting messages he sent to me, and I can't even write them all. I'm so embarrassed that my own husband read all those messages. I forgot all about Brandon because he has stopped sending me messages for some time. I didn't bother checking again, and I was so caught up with trying to figure out how to tell my husband the truth that I did not even think of trying to hide the texts. I didn't even know that any such text existed at all. I was so surprised that I could not move, and I just stared at the phone like it was the only thing that could save me from the situation I had found myself, or rather than the situation I had brought upon myself. Dane shook his head while he was looking at me and spat on the floor. He told me that I took his trust and shoved it out of the window. He said it was because of women like me that men could not trust their wives. He also told me that he regretted ever giving me the freedom to work as I liked. He said so many things that I had to cover my ear and stop myself from hearing them all. The more I listened to him, the more I realized that I had messed up so badly, and the man that once adored me was now disgusted by everything that related to me. His words cut so deep that I was immensely embarrassed. He told me that he was even more disappointed that I chose to keep it from him for so many days and even up to three weeks. I tried to explain, even though I was stuttering and nothing sensible came out of my mouth. He didn't give me a chance to speak and he just grabbed his car keys and left the house. I spent hours on the floor thinking about what happened and pinching myself so I could wake up and realize it has all been a dream. I had ruined my life for a few minutes with a stranger and I had suffered it, and I am still suffering it in more ways than I could have ever imagined. I could not believe that just like that, my marriage was over and it was all because of my decisions. Every day since that day has been the most miserable day of my life. I cannot even imagine what is going through his head. I know he despises me now, and the thought of that is making me go crazy. The thought that your husband who once loved you and showered you with so much affection now 
gets disgusted and ignores all your calls is very dreadful. I, for one, am still very shocked still. And even as I write this, I'm trying my best to get out of bed and leave the house because I have been stuck in the house for days. The only text message I got from Dane was that he was planning to get a divorce. He just warned me to sign the divorce papers immediately when it came and not try to make a scene or else he would make sure I get humiliated. I don't underestimate his ability to keep to his words, and that is why I am not going to try to act out or hinder the divorce process. I also have a conscience, and I'll be evil if I try to make this divorce hard for him. Update 2. I'm now a divorcee. Wow, life has to be the most unpredictable thing human beings would ever face. The fact that a woman like me who was married just four months ago and is now divorced in a very short time span is crazy. Life has a way of humbling you in so many ways that you don't even know where to start from. I got karma, and it was very hard. Dane didn't even have to lift a finger before I regretted all my decisions all over again. And in case you're wondering what has been happening for the past four months, I'll gladly tell you all because I've been itching to make this post. Just like I said I would, I signed the divorce papers without causing any drama because I knew that there was no need for me to do that. I knew that there was no use dragging it out and trying to play smart when I would end up being the fool at the end of the day. We were living in a rented apartment and did not have our own house, so there was no fight over property and all that stuff. I am also very thankful that we held out and did not have kids yet, or else it would have been very brutal if I had to be separated from my kids. I moved out of the apartment because I could not afford to pay for the apartment on my own, even though Dane decided he wanted to leave. I moved back to my aunt's house because I was living there before I got married. She's the one who has been a mother figure to me, and I can't tell you all she was not mad at me. The neighbors and every single person we knew were spreading rumors and giving their own calculated version of what happened. I never cared to modify anything that has been said about me because I just don't see the point. Even though some people are exaggerating and adding a little bit too much salt, I know they are not lying, and I brought it upon myself. If I have stayed faithful to my husband and not looked elsewhere, I would not have a reason to be embarrassed and become a laughing stock. Some people even call me damaged goods when they think I am not looking. But none of them got to me like the realization of what I'd done. I regret it every single day, and I don't know if the stigma would ever go away. I don't think any man can even come to the neighborhood without knowing the full stories because everyone seems to be talking about it. My aunt keeps reminding me that the rumors might never let me get married. It's been four months now, and I have said that I made a mistake and I'm over it. I've pitied myself long enough and I've realized that regretting things and spending days remembering everything will not make or change anything. Dane has moved on with his life and I deserve to move on with my life too. I have a career to get back to, and I need to start accepting the gigs that have been coming my way. I've learned my lesson, and it has taught me a lot, but that doesn't mean I should keep dwelling on the past. I've told my aunt that I only plan on staying with her for two more months before I move to New York. I have enough money saved up to open a dance studio and an office so that I can easily receive my clients. I've blocked all the background noises, and even when my aunt and other family members try to tell me what my ex-husband is up to and what is going on in his life, I always tell them I am not interested because I do not plan on relieving all those memories again. Well, that's all, guys. I'm just trying to get a place in New York before I move there. Brandon stopped contacting me two months before the divorce was finalized, and I have had my peace since then. I sincerely hope that no one makes the kind of bad decisions I've made and women should just try their best to be more present and think about the consequences of their actions before they indulge any male gender. Also remember to stay safe at bachelor parties, lol. Shalom, peace. Husband caught me cheating in my secret location and waited three days to brutally get me back. Hey Reddit, my name is Amanda, 33F, married to Dixon, 35M, for the last three years, which seems like 30 years if you ask me. To be very frank, I was never happy marrying Dixon. He was always busy with his work and hardly spent any time with me. Even when he was at home, he paid zero attention to anything that I spoke about or showed him. He was always engrossed in his work and never had time for me. I tried to talk to him about how I felt so lonely and unloved, but he dismissed it by saying that if I had a lot of free time, then I should put it to use and stop piling on. Wow, 
This was not the person that his parents described him to when they wanted me to marry their son. To be very honest, my parents wanted to get rid of me, and once they found someone rich who showed a reasonable amount of interest in their daughter, they readily agreed to have me married. They did not even try to check on me regularly, but always had time to call me when they needed money or help from Dixon. So I had no one I could talk to about my problems in my family. My friends were jealous that I got married off into a rich family and that I might be having the time of my life. Little did they know that it was very suffocating, but I was obviously not going to tell them that and let them live with their jealousy and assumptions. After one year of being married to Dixon, I had concluded that there was no point in trying to expect him to either spend time with me or even love me. I decided to keep myself busy so that I could fill the void that I had been feeling for a very long time. I joined a travel company which would give me the freedom to travel around within the city and to other countries, so that I would not be spending a lot of time at home after work. Though I had no experience, I used my connection to Dixon to get a job. At least Dixon had been useful to me in this way, and that was the only time being married to Dixon ever helped me. I was very enthusiastic when I started working since it put a lot of things out of my head. I could see a lot of positive change in me because I stopped caring and worrying about Dixon. At my job, I was assigned a mentor who would help me with my responsibilities till I was able to do them on my own. His name was Samuel, and he was a real sweetheart. I just loved the way he was so attentive to even the small things that I shared with him and paid so much interest in things that were not even work-related. Within a few months, I was asked to go on a business trip to put in a few travel ideas to the companies that we were affiliated with. Since it was just two hours away, me and Samuel decided to carpool and drive all the way. We both had similar tastes in music and books. The entire drive was filled with lots of discussions around music bands, books, and our opinions about them. We rocked the presentation and as we were about to leave, we saw on the news that there was a big storm that had led to the roads being blocked off so we couldn't go home. The company was kind enough to offer us a stay at one of their hotels till the roads were cleared. We decided to make the most of it and hit a few local bars to enjoy a few drinks and to celebrate the success of signing up for a new deal. We started drinking, and as the night went on, more and more drinks were downed, and by the end of the night, we couldn't even work in our rooms by ourselves. I woke up the next morning with a pounding headache, topless and with no recollection of how I got to the room myself. I looked around and found Samuel sleeping on my panties butt naked. I put on my top, woke him up and accused him of taking advantage of me being drunk last night. I could see that he was slashed himself and was unable to understand anything I was trying to say to him. I asked him to meet me in the lobby once he was all ready and not hungover so that we could discuss last night's events. We both did not remember most parts of last night. We had decided that last night was a huge mistake and that we would never discuss it or even mention it to anyone. Very soon we were sent on another trip because we were such a great team. We tried to act as professional as we could, but there was a lot of sexual tension between us, which was very undeniable. As the night progressed, we knew that there was no way of fighting it, and just like that, we gave in. We started meeting regularly, but I knew that with Dixon being so popular around the city, it was going to be very difficult for people not to notice. I decided to buy a cabin in the woods where we could meet whenever we wanted to. The cabin would be our safe house so that no one raised an eyebrow or even had the faintest of an idea about our affair. It was perfect as we could have the entire place to ourselves and not care about anyone. It was our one year together and Samuel and I wanted to celebrate. I lied to Dixon about having a business trip so that I could go to the cabin to spend a few days with Samuel and celebrate being together for a year. Though we were not officially together, our hearts belonged to each other so I wanted to make it special. I reached the cabin early to prepare and set up everything before Samuel showed up. I had everything in place, including the bed and the bathtub filled with roses and the champagne ready as this was going to be our celebration of one year of being together. Samuel showed up after one hour, just at the time when everything was all ready and perfect. I had no idea that Dixon was following me all along. I don't know how he got to know about this place and interrupted our lovemaking session. He caught us in the bathtub filled with bubbles lying on top of each other. I was taken aback to see him here in that too like this. It was a very embarrassing moment for me. I never expected that I would get caught in that too in this manner. I started screaming at Dixon that he was violating my freedom by following me. It was unethical and illegal of him to spy on me. 
he started laughing at me and my claims and kept pointing at the situation I was in. True that I was naked with another man, but that did not mean that I would be afraid to defend my own rights. I told him that irrespective of the state I was in, I had every right to protect myself from being violated. Dixon did not like that I was being so shameless with no remorse about not having done anything wrong, that he would have no choice but to make me understand that what I was doing was called adultery, which is illegal in a marriage. He said that he just had a very bright idea in his mind on how to make me understand the difference between right and wrong. Before we could even manage to get out of the bathtub, he locked us in the bathroom and switched off the lights and hot water. We did not even have our phone on us to call for help, and we were stuck in the bathroom with no clothes and just towels to help us keep warm. Dixon unlocked the bathroom after two hours and ordered us to get out. If I would have been locked in the bathroom for another 30 minutes, I would have frozen to death. We started scrambling our clothes to find something warm to wear. In the meanwhile, Dixon asked Samuel if he would like to be a part of whatever was going to happen next. Samuel, like the useless shit that he was, bailed out on me and decided to leave me to deal with Dixon. After Samuel left, Dixon questioned me that wasn't it our one-year anniversary that we were celebrating, and how ironic of Samuel to leave exactly after one year of having an affair. I snarled at Dixon that if he would have been nice to me, I would not have to look for love outside of marriage and decide to have an affair with Samuel. All he had been since the time we got married was too busy or unavailable or unappreciative of my actions, which had led me to take the step of having an affair. Samuel, on the other hand, gave me attention, listened to what I wanted to say, and made me feel special, which Dixon never did. I guess that was the reason why I was attracted to him and went so far as to even have an affair with him. Dixon laughed and told me to look at how it all turned out. The guy who made me feel special fled the moment he got his chance. He was not in love with me and just was using me since I was the one who gave him the permission to use me. I knew that it wasn't entirely false because I knew that Samuel was with me for his own convenience. I would be the one paying for most of the things and trips that we would take, but I did not mind that as I thought that he was actually truly interested in me. And also, I wanted to splurge Dixon's money as much as I could. Dixon tied me to a chair and started interrogating me. He asked me if I had been using his money and his connections to show off to my boyfriend how much I could do for him. It was true that I was using Dixon's money for all my rendezvous with Samuel, because it felt like I was slapping Dixon in his face whenever I spent on anything to do with Samuel. Dixon told me that since I was very confident that I could seduce any man with that face of mine, he was going to ruin it for me so that no other man would fall for that innocent face. I kept yelling at him to stop and that I would never repeat this mistake again. He got a bucket of boiling hot water and tried to force my face into it while I was begging him to forgive me and that I would do anything that he wanted me to. He told me that though he might have not given me enough time, he made sure that I had every comfort that I ever wanted at my disposal while he was busy making money. The exact same money that I had been mindlessly spending on myself and my boyfriend for the past one year. He told me that he never forgives anyone who tries to take advantage of his kindness. I was trembling with fear at the thought of Dixon actually burning my face. I tried to coax him into not doing anything to me and change this by convincing him that we could start over and that we both would invest a lot of time in working on our relationship to build trust. He laughed at my failed attempt and told me that he knows when someone is trying to save their ass and making up bullshit just to get out of the situation. Damn, it was going to be more difficult than I thought. I thought that why not try seduction since that could be something which could help me melt his heart a little. I asked Dixon if he could do me a favor and scratch me on my thigh as I was feeling very itchy. He placed his hand on my thigh and all I had to do was direct him towards my panties. And maybe then I would be able to get him to untie me and then run for my life far away from him. I did get what I wanted, but not in a way that I was thinking of. Dixon did not untie me even after feeling me. He had sex with me on the chair that he had tied me on and forced me to pleasure him repeatedly for one hour. He kept slapping me and telling me how dare I have an affair and that too for almost a year. I could see that he was being very rough with me, but I knew that anything I would say would only lead to him being harsher towards me and I did not want that. He woke me with a start by throwing a bucket of very cold water on my face the next morning. I was still tied to the chair, but thank God my face was still safe. He told me that it was a good day to get a lot of things done. I was not very sure what he meant, but it definitely did not look good. 
I mentally prepared myself for the day of torture to begin. He put duct tape on my mouth so that I could not scream for help, and we headed out. He told me that the weather was perfect to camp in the forest. I could not understand what was going on in this cruel head. After walking for almost five kilometers deep into the forest, he found the perfect spot to put on a tent and make a bonfire. I didn't know if I should be impressed with his skills or fear what he might do next. He made me sit very close to the fire under the scorching sun, which made me sweat a lot. The sweat was the least of my worries now since I could feel tiny specks of fire dancing in the air and then falling on my skin. I tried to yell with my mouth closed to Dixon that I was too close to the fire and might end up burning myself. I think he did that on purpose so that he could torture me little by little for deceiving him. It took almost two hours for the fire to die down, and I could see that I had burn marks all over my hands and feet that were waiting to be treated. He took me inside the camp and applied ointment on all my wounds and told me that he was very worried of me being so careless with the fire. Of course, he wanted to act like a loving husband after putting me through all the torture. I felt disgusted and did not even want to look at his face. He forced me to look at him and give me a very cunning smile and warned me that the more I try to disrespect him, the more the level of torture was going to be. Obviously, I was scared for my life because I knew that he wasn't joking about a single word that he said. I was in so much pain that I had no idea when I passed out. When I woke up, I noticed that I was alone in the tent and there was no sign of Dixon. It was pitch dark outside and I could hear the night animals trying to hunt for their prey. The thoughts of Dixon abandoning me in the middle of the forest at night kept running through my mind. I felt that Dixon's torture was much better than becoming food to any of the animals and getting eaten alive. My hands and legs were still tied, and I still had duct tape on my mouth so there was nowhere I could save myself if I was attacked by an animal right now. I felt so helpless, and tears started flowing from my eyes on their own. I tried to look around to find something with which I could protect myself in case I came across an animal. As I was trying to feel something in the dark, I saw the tent moving, and I closed my eyes and waited for the inevitable as I did not even have the heart to see what was going to attack me. I could hear Dixon's vicious laugh and thought about how I could think of such a vile person just moments before dying. I opened one of my eyes and saw that he was standing there laughing at me. I breathed a sigh of relief as you know a known devil is better than an unknown one. He said that he was just outside to get some dinner but never knew that I would be missing him so much. I decided that I needed to act nicer towards him if I wanted to make it out of the forest alive. We slept in the tent, and he made sure that I was going to be miserable the entire night without proper layers to keep myself warm. The next morning, we headed back to the cabin where he untied me finally after two long days. He asked me to clean myself up. I went to the shower and made sure that I took as much time as possible to enjoy being alone and away from Dixon for at least two hours. I could finally touch hot water after two days of living in the cold that I did not want to even get out of the shower. As I continued bathing, I could sense that the water was getting pretty hot. In the beginning, I was really appreciating the hot water, but very soon it was getting too hot to my taste. The water was so hot that I was unable to even enjoy my shower, so I decided to just get dressed and wait for further instructions from Dixon. As expected, Dixon was waiting for me right outside the bathroom. As I was making my way out, he pulled me into the bathroom holding onto my hair and forced me into the shower. He switched on the hot water and pushed me into the shower. The water started burning my skin when I tried to cover my face with my hands and was screaming and yelling at Dixon to stop. After two minutes, he switched off the water and asked me if I was okay. I was in so much pain that I didn't even want to have any conversation with him. I pushed him away and applied some cream to curb the burning sensation. I dressed myself and waited for him to get ready. He took me to a nearby hospital and told them that I accidentally burned myself while showering. It had been one week after Dixon caught me and Samuel in the cabin cheating on him. I had resigned from my job since it would take me at least a month to recover from the burns. I was just resting at home and everyone coming in to see me kept telling me that I was so lucky to have such a loving and caring husband who had left his entire work just to take care of me. I could only scoff at their remarks as I was the only one who knew the truth behind it all. In the second week, I was supposed to go to the hospital to get my dressing changed. Dixon was asked to wait outside, and I thought this was the only opportunity I would get to run away from him. 
After my dressing, I asked the doctor to discuss with Dixon about my progress, as he was very much worried about how I was doing. The doctor was busy with Dixon giving him words of encouragement and the quick progress that I was making. In the meanwhile, I sneaked away from the room and made my way towards the exit. Once I was out of the hospital, I started running like a mad woman without even looking back. I took all these tiny little lanes so that it would get difficult for Dixon to follow me in his car. Once I confirmed that there was no one following me, I decided to take a break from all the running as I was not in my best shape to run for a long time. Thankfully, I had my phone on me, so I quickly went to the nearest ATM and withdrew all the money that I had in my bank account. I knew that Dixon would very easily be able to trace me to the ATM in no time. I threw my SIM card in one of the trucks that was passing by just in case Dixon was tracking my location. I went to a very dodgy looking motel and booked a room for a day so that I could think of my next steps. Though the bed was not very comfortable, I could finally feel free as if I had just come out of a royal prison. The next day I got up very early and decided that I could not stay at one place for a long time and had to keep moving. I left the motel and took a train to Ohio as I did not think Dixon would be looking for me there. I decided to start my life in Ohio if everything went my way. I would change my name, my identity, and even my personality if I had to, so that I could live in peace far, far away from Dixon and his shadow. It has now been two weeks since I moved to Ohio with no signs of Dixon. I can finally think that I am at a better place now, and no amount of luxury could buy me this freedom. Now when I look back, I know that me cheating on Dixon was not the right thing. The way he treated me was not the kind of punishment anyone would deserve. It was very inhuman and ruthless in my opinion. I would wish no one to go through the kind of punishment that I have been through. For anyone reading this, I would like to tell you that if you are in a situation where you think that you are being neglected, then please first try to get out of that situation before you do anything stupid, especially if you have a psycho partner then it would be better to first get out of that relationship as quickly as possible. Trust me, I'm telling this from experience that there is going to be no better way of handling this than actually running as fast as you can and as far away as you can first protect yourself. If you are alive, then you can do whatever you want to do with your life. So make sure that you know the kind of situation you are in before you try to do something behind your partner's back and imagine that they are fools who do not know what you are up to. Thank you all for being a part of my journey into becoming a new person. I wish everyone lots of love and happiness in their lives.